A straight line may be the shortest distance between two points, but it's unlikely to be either the most interesting or fulfilling. Kamisha Naidu and Pashi Reddy are also known as Kim and Pashi, and they describe themselves as soulmates, dreamers and risk-takers with adventurous palettes. Their travels have given them plenty of inspiration for a fusion of East and West, old and new, as we're about to enjoy. The rest of Durban was still somewhere between bed and breakfast, but Kim and Pashi were already busy with a fashion shoot. Although they found fame as creative chefs and business owners, they are also lifestyle influencers with followers who are always hungry for fresh ideas. So creating content is essential. Kim and Pashi are young, creative food enthusiasts and entrepreneurs. Staying true to their Indian heritage in terms of flavour, they find new and exciting ways to prepare and present cuisine. I'm meeting up with them today in their Durban home. Okay, so that's going to be our beetroot soil. Yeah. We'll add some microgreens here. So we're going to add the crispy skin because I think that'll add a dimension of texture and I think it'll pair well with everything else that's on the dish, so... Mm, uh, nice. Hi, guys. Hello. This looks interesting. Thank you, yeah. This is a bit of the creative process that goes into every single dish. And do you think, for all cooks, maybe even home cooks, that it's important to write their ideas and creative process down? I think in everything, if you have a plan, you can have it in vision. It's a goal. And with a dish, there's so much more than just throwing everything into a pot. Sometimes, you know, if you think about it and lay it out and have those different elements, people have a full experience. How important are the building of the elements in a dish? Elements are really important in a dish because they create a very balanced dish. You need your sweet, your sour, your crispy. That creates a dish holistically and that acts on your senses. And I'm sure you can't wait to get into this. Yes, we've got some beautiful dishes that we like to cook up for you. So let's go. So Krusha, today we're making a salmon sunset, and what we're gonna do is play on the Japanese sushi. We're gonna use the tandoori spices to create a beautiful spice rub. We're gonna remove the skin now. That's gonna be used to be the textural element of the dish. What you're gonna do is run your knife under the skin and slowly pull back. Once it lifts, you're gonna keep running your knife with contact of the skin and pull gently, and the skin should come off perfectly. So for our next part of the dish, we are going to use the tandoori spice. Not too much, because a little goes a very long way. And we're going to put this in a very hot pan. It's literally going to be there for 30 seconds per side, because we don't want to overcook it. That's perfect, and we'll just remove it gently from the stove. The residual heat will now bring it to temperature. And for the dressing, we're going to be adding our orange juice. And then we're going to add some sugar, which is going to help it reduce even quicker. And then to help it reduce, we're going to add some water. Now we're going to take our chili and slice it through the middle and remove all the pips from the chili. If there is some left, it doesn't really matter. To follow through, we're going to grate some zest. That's going to go into our reduction. Now we're going to take the ginger and we're going to roughly chop it. It doesn't really matter if it has some of its strings on because we are going to be straining it. And let that cook through so it really gets the flavor into the reduction. But I already have a pre-strained one and I'm very happy with that. So now we're gonna take the skin that we've left aside. I'm gonna now place the skin into the searing hot pan, flip it. It should take around 30 seconds on each side and you'll have a beautiful crispy skin once it settles on the pan. So I'm gonna remove this gently now and place it on a paper towel just to drain that excess oil and it should be crisp in a matter of seconds. So this is very interesting. It's beetroot powder. It's beautiful, earthy, and it's gonna add another layer to this dish. Yum. I'm going to be making a wasabi mayo and all you do is just put a little bit of mayo into a bowl and then you add a little bit of wasabi just to give you a really nice kick. And then we're just going to stir it a little. And this is going to really complement our salmon. This dish looks amazing when it's plated. Let's move on to the next station because we need a high heat for the next dish. Okay, great, let's go. Ooh, lamb shank is my favorite. This is an amazing dish. You're really gonna enjoy this. It's very innovative, and the fact that we've used a butter masala, which is not normally used, makes it even more delicious than it already is. Let's get started. I'm just gonna put the fire on, and we're gonna start off first with the mirepoix. So we're just gonna stir this around. 
and get a bit of color onto the vegetables. Next, we're gonna sear the lamb shank. That seals the meat, and then we're gonna slow cook it in a stock. We're then gonna add some thyme, and then we're gonna add some curry leaf. And that's gonna add a dimension of spice, but also that Indian heritage coming through. So we just wanna make sure that all the sides are brown, which it should take five to 10 minutes. So this is now browning beautifully. So now we're gonna use the wine, and the wine is gonna really develop those flavors as it cooks, but also acts as a tenderizer. Alternatively, you can use vegetable stock or a chicken stock and use that with a tomato puree. That'll give you a bit of richness if it's halal or you just don't have alcohol. We're gonna add the water now. That's gonna cover the lamb. You can keep filling as you go, but this really gets the lamb shank to be tender. Now you can just cover that and let it sit for an hour and a half, and the next time you look at it, it should be falling off the bone. It smells amazing. So this is the most important part. It's the base, and we're gonna start off with layering it with some onions and they're gonna saute for a bit. We're gonna add in our butter masala spice and that's gonna develop as it toasts. Now we're gonna move on to the tomato and that's gonna just stop the spices from over toasting. We'll cook this for about 10 minutes until the tomato acidity is cooked out. The tricky part with masalas is you just don't want to burn it. Three minutes, that's more than enough before you add your next ingredient. So now we can add the curry leaf. Just tear the beautiful leaves off. This is gonna add another depth of flavor and also give it a beautiful smell. And we're gonna go straight to the cream. The cream is what makes this really rich and full flavored. You can add 500 moles of cream. Right now, the flavors have to develop further. The cream's just got in there, but it's time to add the butter. And it can't be butter masala without butter. And let that butter slowly melt into the gravy. So Karisha, the best thing to do is leave that alone. Going over to the lamb, it's looking beautiful. I can see the proteins are starting to break down, which means it's beautifully tender. We're gonna add a bit of spice, and this spice is the Durban Masala. It's intense, so just a touch. That's to finish and round off the flavors and add that underlying Indian flavors that we're trying to infuse into these dishes. Krisha, can you pass me the pistachio crumb, please? Sure. Thank you. So this is pistachio and panko crumb, which is a Japanese bread crumb. And what this is gonna do is create more texture. It's gonna encrust the lamb shank and give it a beautiful added texture. Mmm, a bit of crunch. Kim is across from us, creating dessert that kind of rounds this entire meal. Yum, let's go. Hi Kim. Ooh, I've heard so much about this dessert. So tell me, what's in it? What I have here is some pan-seared plums with some cinnamon, thyme, and butter. Next, I'm going to start plating with our crumb. It's a thyme-infused crumb, which we love playing on flavors that are savory on desserts. And what's in the crumb? It's flour, it's butter, and it's thyme. It's very easy. It's in the oven for about 20 minutes, and you have a perfect crumb. Next, we have our seared plums which I'm going to place on top of our crumb that we have made. And we love to use negative spacing in our desserts. And next we have some cinnamon, which I'm just gonna sprinkle over the top of our plums. Next we're going to add the thyme, and like I said, we love adding a savory element to our desserts. We're going to put some ice cream. What we've done with our ice cream is we have infused it with some cardamom. So this is a vanilla infused cardamom ice cream, otherwise known as a coffee. Finally, to top it off, this is our red wine reduction. It adds a sweet and sour element to the dish, which is just gonna balance out the plums and the soil. We could substitute that with a balsamic vinegar. It looks beautiful. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I can't wait for you to try. <laughs> and I can't wait to taste. But first, for the main, we have the lamb. Oh my goodness, look at this. So what we have is the pistachio and panko crumb, which adds a bit of texture to the dish. And then you have the alu fry, which is the starch of the dish. The plum jam, which is that sweet and spicy element. The crispy shallots, because who doesn't like a crispy onion? And the papadum for that added texture. And that's the beautiful dish and all the elements together. And don't forget our salmon sunset. Wow, you've really nailed the modernization of the Indo cuisine. Thank you, that means a lot to both Kim and I. It was only a pleasure to have you and we were so glad you got to experience this cook with us. I've had such a great day with Pashi and Kim. We we're two young, energetic, vibrant people taking something that's old, classic and dear to us and put a modern twist on it. <laughs>